Hey guys, so in today's video we're going to be working on this 9.9 .9 Mercury 4 stroke that I picked up. This is a 2011 long shaft, manual start only, does not have electric start. I got this up motor for pretty cheap, apparently there is no cowling for it, it fell off the guy's boat apparently and broke. But he did tell me it has been giving him some running issues and stuff like that, so we'll probably have to go through the fuel system and go do stuff like that. But he did say he only put about 12 hours and then on the motor, because he has had it since brand new but he's let it sit for a really long time. So what we're gonna do is a spark and compression test as usual, verify that the power head is healthy. And after that, we'll go through the general maintenance and see if we can get this motor running. And then of course, we're gonna have to try to find a cowling for this engine uh, to replace it and make it look really nice. Something also to keep in mind guys, if you are working on a Tahatsu engine, it's gonna be pretty much exactly the same as this Mercury. Tahatsu makes Mercury's engines um, for these years and this horsepower. So if you are working on a, on a 9.9 or 9.8 Tahatsu, this is the same thing as the 9.9 Mercury that I'm working on right now. So if you guys are working on that, you can watch this video and you should still be able to see what I'm doing and do the same thing on the Tahatsu. Also, if you guys have been enjoying the video, please smash the like button down below as it does help me out a lot, guys. And of course, subscribe so you don't miss any further content in the future. And without that being said, guys, let's hop right into a spark and compression test and let's see what we can do with this engine. Okay guys, so I got the spark tester all hooked up. I'm just gonna kill the light so you guys can see the spark. Again, all you wanna see is a good solid spark between the two prongs, indicating they have a good spark. So I'm gonna kill the lights and let's see if this motor has good spark. And as you guys can see, we have good solid spark on this engine. So now that we have verified that the power head is healthy, we had a good compression, it was right up around 150, 145 on each cylinder. And then we have good spark. What we're gonna do now is go to the fuel system. So the first thing we're gonna do is pop off the carburetor. And just so you guys can see what it looks like inside a cylinder, I don't know if the camera can pick it up off of this, but I'm basically in the cylinder right now. Not a lot of people know what a cylinder's wall is supposed to look like. So you can see in here the hash marks on the side of the cylinder. That is what it's supposed to look like. You can actually kind of see right there where the lines are kind of straight. It kind of looks like the ring might be sticking a little bit, starting to scratch it. Right there, I don't know if you guys can see that little bit, that's a straight line going up. What it's supposed to look like is more like that, where it's all cross hatched. But as you turn this, you can see right here that there's oil in the cylinder. Now this is a four stroke, not a two stroke. There should not be oil in this cylinder right now. At least not with that much oil. What this guy told me was he left the engine laying on the wrong side. Now with the four strokes, you want the tiller side to be laying down if you are ever transporting. He laid it on the other side. What that does is it's able to leak into the cylinder, go through the carburetor, and all stuff like that. So you can actually see the oil still in the cylinder. 
So I might have actually had a higher compression reading than I probably should have. But I'm sure the compression is good because the cylinder walls do look very healthy. You can also see the valve right there. It's just slightly open. Not too much carbon buildup, just a little bit. But this engine is pretty well taken care of, if I do say so myself. But just for you guys at home who are curious, that is what a cylinder wall is supposed to look like, and that's what you want to see. A lot of times when you see a bad cylinder wall, there will be a lot more scratches. You'll see like these dark black marks that are straight lines going straight up. Um, that's called scoring. And what that does is it makes you lose compression in the cylinder, and therefore the engine will not run properly. But I just wanted to show you guys that. And I can actually show you guys the other cylinder as well. This is the bottom cylinder. And this is what the top cylinder looks like. So you, again, you can see that hash marks. That's healthy. That's what you want to see. I don't see any oil in this one. At least not yet, but I'm sure there probably is. There's a little bit of oil there. Very slightly, you can see it. But both, both cylinders look very healthy. If you guys are interested in looking in cylinders, I do recommend this tool. You can get these cameras. I do have a snap-on one. These are basically four scope cameras, and there you, that way you can look through the cylinder with this little camera. It goes both ways. And you can actually record and take photos. So just something cool. If you are a mechanic or working on engines, it's kind of nice to have one of these. It tells you the condition of the power head more than what your gauges can tell you. If you're losing compression, you can always check in the cylinder, see why you don't have compression. Maybe you have some scoring, some bad scratches in the walls, making you lose compression, or maybe sticking rings. So just something for you guys to keep in mind. And just a quick rundown of how to do these carburetors and take them off. All you have to do, these are pretty easy, but all you have to do is disconnect this linkage. You would have to pop this off. It's pretty easy, it just pops off. That's the choke linkage. And then what we have to do is loosen this screw, and then you pull this up and I'll free the throttle. After that, you probably want to remove the dipstick so you can get to this fuel line that's connected underneath this plunger setup. And then there's also one back up in here. They have to disconnect. Then we have to remove is this hose from here. You can actually keep this hose if you want to or you can disconnect it. It's just a free hanging hose. And after that, all it is is two bolts, one here and then one on the inside. So you're gonna have to use an extension probably like this long. And then after that, the carb will come off as one piece what you want to do is hold them all together because you'll have this you'll have a gasket and then you'll have this little plastic piece it's like a spacer and you'll have another gasket and that's pretty much it's pretty easy carburetors but just a quick rundown before i should do it but let's pop off the carb let's get on the bench tear it open and let's see what it's looking like inside Just like that guys, the carburetor is off, but just pull off the air box. So that's the air box. And then right here you have the carburetor. So there's a gasket in between this spacer, then this black piece, and then there's actually a gasket on here still. It's still stuck. And then that's all it is. So what we're gonna do is throw it up on the bench, tear it open, make sure it's all clean, and then after that we'll reassemble it. So let's get it up on the bench and do a carburetor teardown.
first thing that you guys can see, obviously, the bowl gasket is missing. I don't know, maybe this guy took off, whoever owned it before took it off and didn't reassemble it, but there is a base gasket that's on the carburetor, so we definitely gotta put one on or else it will not run correctly. Okay, so now we fully disassembled the carburetor, and that shit doesn't look too bad other than the, the bowl gasket was missing. So all I'm going to do is just spray it out really quickly because it does look pretty clean in here. And then I'm just going to reassemble it. I do have a carb kit for it. I'll have it in the description down below. But some of the stuff I'm not going to replace just because it is all pretty much brand new. Let's uh, get it reassembled and back onto the engine.
And just like that guys, the carburetor is reassembled and looks brand new, looks really good. So what we're going to do now is just make sure everything functions, so it moves, this feels like it has good tension on it. Everything seems to be looking good and should be functioning correctly. So what we're going to do is throw it back onto the engine and get it reassembled and after that we'll do a water pump change. Okay, so now we got everything hooked up properly. Now in this engine, if you look down here, there is a button that says throttle only. So what this says is it puts it in neutral, the engine in neutral still, but you can still move the throttle up. This is how you can start the engine when it's cold and give it a little bit of throttle. So what you're going to do is hold this button as you give it, go to throttle, which is forward. And you'll see this is starting to move. The best way I have found to adjust these uh, is to put it all the way into forward. In, in neutral and we put it all the way to forward hold up on the throttle and then you just tighten this rod up and then it'll all work out so what we're going to do is check that everything is hooked up correctly so I push so I push the button in I go to forward you see the rod starts going up now I'm in max forward you see when I push up on the throttle I can't get any more meaning that so on the tiller hand, I am in max forward, and the carburetor is at max forward. And when I come back to neutral, you should see the arm come down. And it does not go down anymore, so the carburetor is completely shut, making it in neutral. So everything is hooked up correctly. Also, if you pull the choke linkage, you should see this arm move back and forth. So now everything is hooked up correctly. What I'm going to do is a water pump. So I'm going to drop the lower unit change out the water impeller, and then reinstall it. So let's drop the water pump. Okay, so now we're about to do the water, imp water impeller on this engine. What you gotta do is tilt the motor up. Let's come down here. You're gonna take this out. It's a little screw on the other side. This will come off. And we do, there's a jam nut, and then there's a coupler nut. What you gotta do is hold the jam nut, break this uh, coupler loose, and then what you wanna do is uh, pop off the two, the four bolts down below, and the lower unit will drop. And then before you drop it all the way, you won't be able to get this out. So what you're gonna have to do is unthread this coupler all the way out, and then the, all this, the shift linkage will be able to get down. And then when you go and reinstall it, all you have to do is put the coupler back on, and then once you put it in, it'll all work out perfectly. So we unthread it then. It leaves it, disconnects the upper shift linkage to the lower shift linkage, and then we drop the four bolts down below. What you have to do is just unthread this all the way out, and then the lower unit will drop. Just like that guys, the lower unit is off. And if you watched my other videos, if you did notice that the Hatsus that I worked on, the 9.8s, 
Um, they're exactly the same gear cases because Tahatsu does make these engines for Mercury. But the only difference is instead of using this uh, this setup with this coupler and the jam nut and all that, what they do is they put a roll pin in it. So if you go back and look at my other videos, you'll see that this gear case looks exactly the same. They use the same water pumps and everything. So if you ever working on a 99 Mercury or a 15 Mercury, they're all made by Tahatsu for this specific year. The older ones are made by Yamahas and some of them are actually Mercury's. Um, so just something to keep in mind. Let's uh, get it up on the stand. Let's crack open the water pump uh, housing and let's change it in water pellet. Okay, so we got the water pump all changed and we got the lower unit installed. So what we're gonna do is just shift the engine, make sure it does shift into all the gears as it's supposed to and shift smoothly. So right now I am in neutral. And I also, I did take the lower unit off in neutral. I don't know if I mentioned that. Right now, if you spin the prod shaft, it should spin freely, which it does. Now, if I shift into forward, it should lock into forward gear. It's just nice and smoothly. Come down here and it is locked in gear. Go back to neutral. It's just really nicely back to neutral. And the prop spins freely. Now at the same time as spinning the prop shaft, you want to shift it into reverse. Shift really smoothly again. And it's locked in gear now. And if you go back to neutral, just shift really nicely. And the prop spins freely. Now that we've done the water pump impeller, we took off the lower unit and we've gone through the fuel system. What I'm going to do now is kind of just the general maintenance that includes an oil change, gear loop change, go through the spark plugs, and then also replace the fuel filter. So let's uh, get that general maintenance done, and then after that we'll test run this engine.
Okay, so we've got the system all primed up now. What we're going to do is fire up the engine and see if it stalls. And then after that, we'll detail the motor. So let's fire it up and let's see how this engine runs. So the engine started on the first pool and it's pumping water perfectly. So what we're going to do is just run it for a couple minutes, see if it stalls out or anything. And then after that we'll detail it. The engine does shift into gear correctly. Try and then forward. Back to neutral. And then into reverse. It shifts really nicely. And then back to neutral. The engine sounds really good. Just gonna see if all the kills all the kill switches work. So the first kill switch kills the engine. Fires right back up. And then the second kill switch in the handle kills the engine. And it fires right back up. So then the engine does start from perfectly and runs excellent. What we're going to do is just let it run for about 15 minutes. If nothing happens within those 15 minutes, then I'm just going to detail the motor and I'll be the end of the video. So just let it sit here, let it run for a little bit, and I'll come back to you guys in a little bit. Okay guys, so the engine has been running for over 15 minutes. What I'm going to do is kill the engine and just make sure it does restart one more time. And it fires up right back up. So what we're going to do now, guys, is uh, take the engine out of the tank, do a full detailing on this motor, and I'll be ending this video. So let's get out of the tank, let's clean it up, and let's see how look nice this looks now. So we just finished completely detailing this motor, and it turned out looking really good. It almost looks brand new, actually. Um, and the motor actually is essentially a brand new motor. It doesn't really have that much hours on it. And it turned out really looking really nice. If you guys have been enjoying the videos, please smash the like button down below, as it does help me a lot. And hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any further content in the future. With that being said, guys, this is going to be the end of the video. I'm just going to show you guys a quick little walkthrough of it, and that will be the end. So I'll see you guys in the next one.